Hello and welcome back to Digging for Drez. This time, we are heading back to Minmus with a bigger lander than we have ever had before. Now you may notice, this is a three-man capsule, but we've only got two Kerbals. That's because we've got someone to pick up along the way. And we'll see who that is once we get to Minmus. But before we can get there, we have to rendezvous with our transfer stage. Because this rocket won't get us to Minmus. What this rocket will do is get us into orbit to meet up with the transfer stage. And the uh, Apollo program had a similar plan to this early on. Construct the uh, spacecraft on orbit. But that would have been very, very complicated. And so the uh, Saturn V was designed to uh, not need to do that. Of course there was still docking necessary but it didn't require multiple launches. Whereas this one does. We launched the transfer stage at the end of the last episode. And in the interim between episodes, I looked into stage recovery. And now that I've got the latest version, it will work now. So that first stage there, which costs about 36,000 funds, will be recovered and we will be able to get our money back. And money is what this whole program runs on. That and science. So, yep, there's the transfer stage. And we're not too far out of the plane. We're not completely coplanar, but that's alright. Now you notice here, a little interstage fairing. That's because uh, we've got a uh, Terrier engine instead of a... Uh, Poodle. Now let's see, we don't want to go too high because we want to end up at least sort of slow on our rendezvous, but we can push it higher than that. Say about 115 ish. And that projects a 9.6. We can work with this. Also, we've got some more survey missions lined up. So, just time accelerate into space. Yeah, we are actually quite far out of plane. So, we know this song and dance by now. Tweaking the nodes to trim down our encounter. And of course, remembering to move the handles in the correct direction. But after a bit of work, we end up with an encounter of less than 500 meters, which is perfect, and we'll end up using the rest of the fuel in this stage. So all in all, quite efficient. Although I don't know about yeah, uh, using this setup for later missions. I think I'll look at more towards a uh, all-in-one launch. And now it's back to normal speed. Let's see, where are we? There we are. 
Nope, that's the wrong way. There's a bit of RCS. We've got plenty of fuel for that. Yeah, so we're going to be coming in to within about 200 meters. And we want to kill this velocity before we get there. At least we're not going to end up crashing into this stage at this point. It's always a danger. Especially in flying on merely instruments. It can be very easy to be too accurate. And there it is. Okay, so we're a bit too far. And that's essentially the stage done, so fairings. There we are. Okay, apparently my camera is not liking me very much right now. Yeah. Set this target. Control from here. I want to go this way. Let's see if we can bring this up, huh? per second. All vectors lined up. And just in time for sunrise. And feel the force. Docked. Perfect. Now let's see. So that's that. So we've got uh, about 1.9 meters per second in this stage here, which is good. And that's the one that's fired up. Excelente! So we want to control from here. The fairing's still fluttering around there. How about we uh, turn off those satellites? I've got a lot of those. Set Mimis as target. We are going to need one hell of a plane change, and we are pretty much exactly where we want to be, which means I can't plan a maneuver node. So let's just time accelerate a little bit further. Doesn't really matter. Now, if all goes to plan, we will be able to leave this transfer stage in orbit around Minmus as sort of the start of a uh, refueling station. Because we are going to want to have refueling bases on at least Minmus. Because it would be pretty dumb to uh, try and send a drilling rig out to Drez or something before testing it in our local system. But that sort of thing is a bit beyond us at this point. So a 23 second burn. Apparently. We can close engineer for this portion. Now with three Kerbals, I've got a maximum of about two weeks of life support 
on this. You might notice the uh, waste products building up quite fast, and that's merely because it's only the uh, capsules slots that it has available. I've got two small of the uh, hex can life support things in. So you have three kerbals, so I've got about two weeks. Let's see. Okay, we can start burning now. We're a bit late, because I didn't check our thrust, but that's alright. And as the sun rises over Kerbin, we continue our burn towards Minmus, checking out the uh, IVA view, and also noticing that the joint between those docking ports is not exactly stable. But if we're careful, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now completing the burn, and planning our plane change maneuver to intersect with Minmus. And once that's done, we will be making further corrections once we're inside the sphere of influence to uh, make a rendezvous with the um, target. And there we are, inside Minmus's sphere of influence. And this is our target. If I could target it, please. There we are, Carol's Hulk, so does target. 7 by 6.8. 7.7 7 by 6.8. Wow, that is about as low an orbit as you could safely want. And because we are so far out of the plane when we launched, we have ended up in a very polar orbit. So, let's put our periaps about there so that we can uh, start rendezvousing with Carol. Now, that's such a normal name that it has to be a reference to somebody. The only famous Carol I know is the uh, character from The Walking Dead. But somehow I doubt Squad would uh, go for that as a reason. So, if anyone knows who this Carol might be, Please let me know in the comments. Oh, don't want to go quite that far. So where is she? She is ahead of us at that point. Then she's pretty much below us. Oh, man. I never like rendezvous like this when you're coming into a particular body and then you've got to meet up with something that's already there. down as we get close because I do not want to miss this and as we come in and make our orbital capture it turns out that we are about as far from an ideal encounter as we can possibly get so we make a circular orbit and then I start testing the maneuver nodes to see how far out we are and it's going to take a whole Kerbin day to get around to this maneuver. So I won't subject you to this. 
I'll just skip ahead to when we finally make the encounter. And finally, after eight days in space, well, almost nine, we are finally coming in towards our rendezvous burn with Carol. Yeah, we're three minutes out. She had to be in that teeny tiny orbit, didn't she? She couldn't have been like 20 kilometers altitude. No, she had to be 8. We can deal with this. Well, okay, she's got no life support, so that means she's got about two hours before she freezes. Okay, our orbital period is 45 minutes. We can deal. Here we are. Moving on in. Stop using RCS, otherwise it will run out. Although we don't really need it much, so yeah, keep using it. Now, Carol is pretty key to this mission anyway, because being a scientist, she can reset the uh, materials bay and the goo. And that is good because. We have some things that we need to do with those instruments. close here. Well, we're gonna hit. We are going to... Okay, no, we're gonna miss. Good. Okay, switch over, get her out, and fly her over, because she's probably tired of being stuck all alone in that capsule there.
grab. And in you get. And now we have got 10 days of life support. Now let's do a bit of science up here, shall we? Because that is part of the reason why we are here. And crew report. No crew report. Okay, Carol, out to get again. We need to collect and restore. Yay, it's operational again. That's great. Previously, you would need a, uh, a, um, lab and two kerbals inside said lab in order to get the uh, experiments reset but now all you need is a, a scientist that is awesome and it's at this point I decide to just use the transfer stage for deorbit so it's a quick plane change to put us over the right area and then make our deorbit burn. As it so happens, right over one of the sites that we need to be at. So once that's complete, we just undock and turn on our own engine and then watch it crash in a spectacular blaze of glory. Oh, and there's the shadow. Bang. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, shit! Slow down! Okay, we're good. Jeez. M little miniature heart attack. We've got so much Delta V in this ship. Whoa! Bounce! No, 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 come back. Yeah, bit of break dancing. That's awesome. Oh, temperature. Ah, we're in the lowlands. That's all good. Lots of science. And of course, a crew report. Carl, you're up. And it appears Squad has fixed the glitch where standing on a ladder would class as flying. That's good to see. Oh look, there's the uh, rest of the transfer stage over there. Come on. Oop, get a bit closer there. Take data, collect, restore. Something is seriously wrong with Kerbal Attachment System because I should be able to also pick up those things. Grab, and board. And now it's time to rinse and repeat for these other two surface readings using barely any fuel in doing so. Really, if you want to do missions like this on Minmus, hopping around like this, the LV-909 Terrier is the engine to use. And I ultimately question whether or not I actually have enough life support to get the orbital readings. Well, you know, I might just send a new... another mission later on to get these two because I know I can get these from this orbit. The only problem is, I don't think I have enough life support. Yeah, you know what? 
we're just gonna make for home. And after a long time of messing around with maneuver nodes, we simply can't avoid this moon encounter. And it continually stuffs up my return trajectory. But that's what happens when you are in a system with such a large moon. If you have an encounter, it's very hard to avoid it. The dual system is just as bad with Lath and Tylo. But after a while, we do manage to get a return trajectory. And of course, the same glitch thing happening there. And the uh, commsats were particularly difficult because, especially with the orbits that called to be very close to the moon, they either ended up slamming into Kerbin or being flung out into interstellar space. And just checking the science there to make sure we haven't missed anything. And then it's on to the re-entry. Yeah, they've still got two days of life support left. That's a nice buffer. Coming down. Ditch the service module. Off it goes. You can see the batteries, RCS tanks, and life support in there. Now, Operation Crash Dive, heat shield first. Whoa! There goes the service module. Bye! Alright, see so heating at 38 kilometers. You might see that blow up. Fireball of the deserts. I'm starting to eat through the ablator now. So, after this, we should have a nice big bouncing of science and a lot of experienced Kerbals. Which is what we want. And I've been recording for over an hour now. This is the longest recording I've ever done. Yeah, so, constant 3G re-entry. That's pretty nice. Heating We're below Mac two. And approaching Mac one. Shoots and heat shield. I love how it just slowly falls away. What are these set to? 100. 1,500. Now let's watch it plummet down to the surface. Like a splash. <laughs> Neil's pretty happy to be home. Uh, 
And I'm pretty happy with how that went. It still requires one more small probe mission to uh, complete that temperature scan contract. But I'm happy. We got a new Kerbal, got a boatload of science. And got a lot of experience. And splash down. And just because I haven't got enough science yet, we'll grab a little bit more. Now let's see what we can buy with all this. 790... 729 science. And they're all level 2. Nice. Now, what can we purchase? And now it's just a matter of finding out what we're going to buy. After much deliberation, I end up getting science tech and advanced electronics. So that gives us uh, extendable solar panels and the uh, orbital ore scanners. So we're getting close to using the new resources. So until next time, see you guys later.